evening. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Pastor David Morse from the Evangelical Church in Berlin to open the seat as part of the prayer. Thank you. Right. Father God, we thank you for everybody standing in the room here who gives their service um, for this community. Uh, we thank you for the aldermen, we thank you for the officers of the council here. Uh, we ask for, for your blessing and your favour on me tonight. Uh, we ask for your wisdom. We also commit this community to you. We thank you that we're blessed and privileged to, to live in an amazing part of the world. And, and we just ask that you continue to, to work in this community and the things that happen here tonight would continue to grow and build this, this region. In your mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, before proceeding, I'd like to acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the traditional custodians of the land we're meeting on tonight. Pay respects to all the past and present. It was my meeting that we and will be available on our website later this week. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I attended the Australian Coastal Councils Association conference in Queensland, Redcliffe in May of this year and we actually received an award and it was the Annual Achievement Award and it was for our adaptation pathway and the lessons learned. And myself, Alderman McFarlane and Phil Watson were there to actually receive it but I'd like to formally present it to Council. Thank you very much. In accordance with notice given, I move that Council approve the removal of, of the tree from Council's nature strip adjacent to the dwelling at 1 Tanundal Street, <coughs> excuse me, in Howrah. Uh, this has a chequered history, uh, Mr Mayor, and that is that you'll note that I have enclosed a copy of the um, uh, response to the Alderman's request and that's dated the 2nd of May 2017. Prior to that I was approached by a uh, person who actually is the owner of 1 Tanundal Street expressing concern in, with regard to the tree and also their concern about the, um, well, the basis of which the front of their, their dwelling is actually concealed and there is also some concern on their part in relation to security for, from the family's perspective. 
In the Council's response of the 2nd of May, it, it says, and I quote, Council has once again employed independent arborists to inspect the tree and the assessment is the tree has a future life expectancy of 10 to 15 years and any further trimming of the tree would increase the likelihood of storm damage. And, quote, and, and, and further, no action on this was recommended by the arborist. Uh, so having said that, I met on a Sunday morning with uh, Tanya Smith and we uh, discussed their, her concerns and her family's concerns with regard to the tree and in her letter, which I have circulated a copy this evening, dated the 8th of June, uh, I'm sure everybody has read that, it states, uh, and I'm quoting now from dot point one of the letter of the 8th of June, this tree creates a major security risk to myself and my family as it conceals the front and the front of my home, particularly my front door, allowing possible unwarranted behaviour, especially at night." Unquote. So, in other words, the, the tree is of major concern to the family. Uh, I might add that this is the only tree that, in fact, is of this size and nature in Tenundal Street. And notwithstanding that, it would appear that it is um, well, basically covers the front of the property and uh, the attachments uh, bear witness to that. I seek council support for the removal of this tree. Thank you, Mayor. Look, quite often, Mayor, I'd go through the, the process that council does, but when I looked at the photos of this tree, I went around and had a look myself. And I totally agree with all of what James said. For one, and I hate to say this, if you say trees, but it's a damn ugly tree. It's in a very bad position. I totally agree with what Tanya Smith said. It completely blocks security of that house, which also worries me. Now, why does it worry me? Because I was on neighbour, the very first neighbourhood watch in uh, Tasmania. So we look for things like this in neighbourhood watch. Now, here's the person that's concerned with a tree that's on our nature strip, that's blocking the view of her house to me. It's a risk. To me, it's a damn ugly tree. Now, I can understand the arborist saying all this and, and uh, it could be done this way and it could be done that way. But sometimes you've just got to use some common sense. And in this case, all right, we've got a process, but you know, go and have, if you went and had a look at it, you'd say to remove the tree is a right thing to do for this person. And I totally agree with this motion that it should be removed. Uh, Mr Mayor, it's just come to attention that the person affected is known to me and I'm going to declare an interest and set myself. Thank you. Mr Mayor, when I first came to Council, we actually had the situation where aldermen could bring issues of concern in relation to trees to a council meeting through a motion on notice, as has been done tonight. This created some issues, and that was actually addressed in the tree policy that was developed, and that tree policy has subsequently been reviewed. And the important aspect is, for me, in relation to this matter, is that there is actually a policy that has a clear process in relation to residents having concerns about trees. And as has actually been noted in the response to Alderman James's Alderman request, it's noted by Mr Graham, the Acting Wood Manager of Asset Management, that the resident can actually apply <coughs> through the proper process to have this tree removed. In doing so, not only is the arborist report considered, but also surrounding neighbours are actually contacted 
and also we actually look at the officers look at the issue from a holistic perspective. My concern is that if we start going outside of our policy and the process that we have, this may actually become that we are circumventing the requirements of the policy on a regular basis. And for that reason alone, I actually will not be supporting this motion, but I certainly suggest to the resident concerned that they apply. And they can apply online or they can actually send an email to council or they can come in and get a hard copy of the application form and then it will be considered along with every other request that we get from residents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, um, I was going to ask, from reading this, it doesn't seem as though any application that complies with our policy has been received around Alderman Von Bertosch has clarified that. I haven't been around some of Alderman Von Bertosch or Alderman Jones, but it seems a very reasonable request. However, I'm confused, as I, say, as I say, I understand that there is a council policy with a set of procedures that relates to the removal of trees on council land. Um, this includes, very importantly, local community consultation. I'm also very surprised that Norderman and Alderman James' experience would, would not be aware of this, and if so, why circumvent this? I think it is very unwise to circumvent, among other things in this, in this instance, community consultation. Um. I have the residence letter before me and all of those factors are quite clear and one would have to concur that the tree should be removed based on that. But I'm confused, just like Alderman Cusick, because I can't understand why the Alderman's request and the answer that was provided on the 2nd of May and the instruction that was given in that was not abided by, I, I, I'm confused, because this puts us in a position of not wanting to set a precedent because the former policy was just like this, but it's been amended, it's been made um, quite clear. And so I'm, I'm, I'd like to see if there is a, a reason why it hasn't gone, because it doesn't, even though an arbitrator um, can say that it's safe and it's going to last 10 years, that still doesn't mean the tree won't be removed based on council's decision. So that's the thing that I'm, that I'm quite confused about and I don't quite understand when we do have Alderman's requests and we get responses that we then go and override that response and go, well, I'll do another request or I'll put a motion forward and I, I won't, I won't uh, abide by the response that council's given. That's my dilemma. Thank you. I could add in the debate at this stage, um, while maybe a self-evident case of the tree should be removed, um, I am concerned that uh, going outside the policy runs the risk of taking us back to where we were um, five or two years or so ago, whereby every council meeting involved two or three requests to remove trees and we approach the whole thing in a very much an ad hoc manner. So we landed on this policy as a means of dealing with the uh, vagaries of yeah, perhaps more questions than uh or speech, uh, Mr Mayor. Just wondering, maybe through Mr Graham could just run through what the actual current procedural avenue is available. Just actually spell that out uh, in a succinct fashion at this stage in this case. For you, Mr Mayor. So, as, as mentioned before, the applicant can make a, uh, at no cost.
Um, then a consultation to adjacent uh, neighbours where they have the ability to make a comment whether they agree or disagree. We'll have the arborist to go and have a look at the terms of, of the life of the tree, whether it's recommended to be removed or whether there's stability issues or maintenance requirements. And then council officers will go through the report and consider on a risk base whether it should be removed or are there other safety issues in terms of sight lines uh, for um, uh, motorists um, people are leaving the house or for pedestrians as well and then in accordance with our pol policy we'll make a recommendation to council and council uh, still have the ability um, to consider that <coughs> even after council officers have made the decision as to whether it's accepted or refused. So whilst that process does involve a degree of time it's a process that could have been initiated a bit earlier than where we are now. It's a process that will allow for a decision with a greater degree of facts. Um, if, it, if it gets down to just visceral, visceral sort of decisions, then, then my visceral decision on my gut would be cut it down. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I can empathise with the owner on that, um, on why they would have concerns. And then separate to those concerns, um, <coughs> you know, it's, um, I'm pretty sure that tree is taking, you know, encroaching in a quite a significant way from, if you like, council land into into their property as well. I think there's a really strong case for it. Um, I can understand why why the affected party may be disappointed with, with some of the way that we may vote on this tonight. Um, and I'm voting against the uh, notice of motion, not because viscerally I don't agree, but I think it, it makes eminent. <laughs> you can just look at it and understand why that is, but. Um, the process is there for a reason. Um, it will allow more accountable decision to be made in those cases where it might not be quite as obvious as this. And if we start the circumvention process, then, then we're back to where we are. So uh, I'm voting against the motion, uh, not necessarily voting against the intent or the desired outcome of it. <coughs> no, I know that everybody seems that we haven't done, gone through the due process, but if you look at the man, general manager's comments, it says the effect of the council management of trees on council land is ensuring that trees in high urban areas are regularly inspected for hazards that pose a risk to public safety. Ensure that trees are regularly, routinely pruned. Well, this hasn't been pruned at all. Protecting utilities, enhancing public safety and urban amenity. So we haven't, as a council, even complied with our own policy. Removing lower branches to a height of up to a height of three to five metres in order to clear give clear pedestrian and traffic access and sight lines. Well, that's just a joke. I mean, that's, those trees are actually on the uh, branches on the ground, so we're not even applying our own policy to this tree. Other speakers. Five five and uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a couple of things have occurred in relation to this, and there has been um, a policy whereby it, it goes to the joining neighbours. There is some discussion in relation to that. Um, this particular residence is on a corner block, and there is a, a turning circle immediately to its um, left of the actual property in question. Council. I believe has a right has a role to play, and that is, in the case of exceptional circumstances, we can overrule we can overrule our policy, and we've done that. We have done that on a number of occasions. Now I'm saying that in this particular situation, there is a risk to the family, and this council is very very concerned about its. Uh, a liability cover, insurance cover, in relation to uh, its footpaths, its standard of footpaths, and even the trees for that matter. And the general manager has gone to great lengths to spell out the risk associated with this and not necessarily go into the detail of whether or not the tree is healthy or otherwise. In the alderman's request response, the future life expectancy of this tree is 10 to 15 years. So if you go through the process, you will end up, I believe, with the advice of the arborist for the tree not to be removed. 
because it is stated in this memorandum that the tree has a future, future life expectancy of 10 to 15 years and therefore it will not be removed. So by going through this process of putting it to council and in these circumstances where there's so much risk associated not only with passers by but the family that are actually living in this property, I believe it's appropriate that we take this measure and have the tree removed. And it is sending a signal and it's not necessarily setting a precedent because at the end of the day we've got to weigh up the risk versus the, life, uh, the, the actual future expect, uh, expectancy of the tree, any tree for that matter, and then it comes down to that. But when we're talking about risk to a family, and that is from intrusion from anybody in the community, and this is just a case of where it's going to happen if that tree is not removed. I seek council support. Motion is as uh, tabled all in Daniel, those in favour? Against? Motion's lost. Uh, and what do you do now? The process to be invoked upon? Well, the tree won't be removed. Well, it will be three weeks down the way. It's important to understand that our policy provides for council to overturn our recommendations by the staff, even if they do this by the retainer. And so I think it is wrong, in fact, to assert that it can't be brought back to this council in the appropriate place. Well, the other is to say it's not so the other is that have a final opinion on it. It's no point in entering into the debate in this right now. It's not the end of the Um Item 10. You know, we can from outside by two or three. I was just saying to the council already that the court has brought the 31st of March to be called by the middle of the second place. That's a weekly briefing. I'm talking about the uh, Saturday council authority court being called. All those in favour? Against? Actually, that's carried to the council. Thank you. Thank you. I have the minutes for the Waste Strategy South meeting for the 22nd of May 2017. Should that have been previous? Um, I so I've received it now. Probably part of the issue is master plan, <coughs> which is on page three. Um, councils decided to proceed with the tender for construction of the South Arm, <coughs> excuse me, Skate Park. Uh, 
and the mayor has circulated a letter to nearby residents. My question is in relation to that, and it's to Mr Graham. Uh, Mr Graham, has there been anything to sort of quell the unrest that has developed between a number of the residents backing onto a proposed skate park and also the other group in the community who are quite um, definite in their desire to have it built in that location? Has there been any mediation, has there been anything to actually allay their concerns in relation to this? Uh, So further to the, the Mayor's letter, Mr Graham, <coughs> of the 31st of May. Uh, through, through yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, through the Mayor, through to Mr Graham. In the Mayor's letter of the 31st of May, he says, to clarify concerns in relation to usage hours, a new discretionary planning application will be lodged seeking approval for usage of the facility during daylight hours. And then he goes on to say, in limiting use of the facility to daylight hours, there will be no requirement for lighting other than standard security lighting at the facility, unquote. In what the general manager has said, there will be public consultation, will there not, in relation to this variation to the permit? Well, true, well, uh, a discretionary application by its very nature requires public consultation. And does that mean that there won't be any process uh, on the actual development of the skate park until that has been concluded? The, the process of consultation? Or is it full steam ahead? Um, I'm going to have to reserve the Thinking ahead, my view is that it needs to be put on hold until we consider that, because if it's only work usable from nine to five, as the current permit allows, and we don't get the other discretionary permit, then I've got to question the location and the use of it. But I'll take that information through the weekly record reports. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I ask questions in right of reply? Um, your your letter to the residents was that following the, the workshop discussion um, on the issue of the has that been circulated to all of them? And I okay, I must have missed it then. I'll I'll try and look for it. Thank you. 
Yeah, just another time. A few aldermen around me are, are saying it's extremely cold in here and I'm not that warm myself. Is there any chance of any heat? It's very hot air. I totally concur because uh, the objective said a person to encourage more extensive forms of sport. Well, I thought that's what we wanted, and I think this is an ideal place for for this. And that in actual fact, I, 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 if it wasn't so far away, I'd be going to class with my sock me. speakers get to the floor soon. Um, the report stacks up and says why why we should recommend it and we should just get on and do it. It's, um, there has been some discussion with Dallas Enterprises, the consulting engineers that are Butts, Bertie, Dunbabin, Dunbabin. Dun, as you were, Dumbarton. 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 Yeah, thanks. Uh, and there is some, has, has been some, um, not animosity, but there has been some sort of uh, uh, in relation to that shared access that Mutz, Dallas is holdings and, um, and this particular development. Is that that has it seems has been resolved because Mr. Lovell has sent a, a letter to the developer to advise that there has no problems with that shared access at 30 Dunbarton. Uh, does this actually impinge upon that, or is it part of that development, or is it further removed into that cul-de-sac area, and therefore it, it doesn't actually impose any problems with that? shared right way between Dallas and the developer. Mm. Yes, um, did, did, Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Do you want to speak to it? Oh, so, yeah, it seems uh, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, any alternative to this, uh, as put out uh, by the officers. Um, I know there are 10 representations, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of interest, uh, judging by the gallery, that, well, uh, a lot of opposition from people attending here, so I seek support. Um, yeah, I must admit it's one of the more complicated mm -hmm. items 
that I've read in recent times uh, and I feel that the officers have actually provided us with a very succinct recommendation, particularly when you look at the issue. I'll second that, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Yeah, this is um, something that doesn't crop up very often under Section 37, and it really catches my attention, in fact, when we do have a Section 37 whereby we are sort of, in a sense, for a number of reasons under Section 37 that is the power of the Commission to dispense with certain requirements. And those certain requirements are quite uh, interesting and they're all obviously listed on page 120. But the key one that I believe is appropriate, having spent a bit of time reading this and also too I have spent a few hours with Mr Carr going over the property and knowing that he is um, <coughs> really wanting to get on with the job and, and further develop and the, I'm, I'm hoping that the restaurant and the jetty etc down the track will come to fruition and I've said in this place on a number of occasions that I believe that once that is built, that is the restaurant and the jetty and the car park, that it will open up that area and provide a valuable service to the community, not only in the Tramere Oceana Corridor but also in the other area of Ropeby and beyond. But what I would like to refer to is um, under section uh, 37B, uh, although I better read part six first, amending the planning scheme to bring it into conformity with the model planning scheme framework or, and B, the public interest will not be prejudiced the Commission may, by notice and writing given to the Planning Authority, dispense with requirements of section 38, 39, 40 and 41, which is basically starting the process again to have a, an amendment as we would normally have an amendment go out to consultation and go through those certain processes. Um, and, the, um, and given its approval to the draft amendment in accordance with section 42, so in this case it is not, I believe, and I think the officers have done a good job in spelling out that it's a minor change, it's not going to impact upon the actual uh, development per se. And so I, I believe it's appropriate that we take this course of action and I think it's important to note that section 37 is there not to be used willy-nilly not to be used as a sort of uh, uh, sort of a, a template for all and sundry, but in the circumstances when there is a, a deviation or a, a slight adjustment or there is an error in the wording, then in fact we can proceed and support the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Uh, Mr Mayor, I find myself being in complete agreement with Alderman Jones on every word he's uttered on this motion and to furthermore say that I think this would be a great, um, a great boost and a great advantage for the area and the, the wider region. <coughs> Okay. 
Um, this has been a long and uh, frustrating process for the proponent. This has been a process that would uh, not necessarily reflect wonderfully on people's opinion of local government as a sector. We've come to the point of an outcome uh, and uh, I, I hope for the proponent's sake that finality is reached tonight because this has been a very long and, um, and uh, cumbersome process and costly process when you, when you concentrate on holding costs and, and opportunity costs. Uh, it has been a, a long and drawn out process. The, the, the situation is, and I don't want to go through it because everybody has, I think, been well briefed on this, but I can only say that having spent countless hours at Ros's place with her planner or ex-professional engineer and the toing and froing that has gone on over the last two years, two years, back in 2015, that's basically when it started. And this council made a decision at the time that it should refuse it. Then it came back to us with its amended plans and we approved it. Then the, then the uh, representatives exercised their right to appeal to the tribunal. The tribunal <coughs> refused it basically on one ground, one, one measure, one condition. So that nevertheless stopped the process and it came back as a, as a new development application. Um, and I'm starting to lose my track here because it's so long-winded. But anyway, the outcome is that the parties have signed the, the agreement. And even though I've been told there is still a couple of things and it's outside the building envelope by a very, very small amount, the roof line has been lowered and that's going to benefit Ms Burgess to a degree. And also the fact of the matter is that um, all the parties have signed the consent and therefore it's merely up for us to endorse that because that is what the parties have agreed to. I might add that on, on the actual um, assessment and relevant background, because I spent a little bit of time going back through this and, and going in my own mind how this, this Thing developed from those early stages and then I note that down here on the page um, assessment the tribunal handed down its decision on the 19th of October 2017. We haven't got there yet. It's a typo. <laughs> okay. Look, we're not really worried about typos but at the end of the day uh, it's, it's not, we're not in 2000, it's October 2016 and refused the proposal and that's when the actual tribunal made that decision on the 19th of October 2016 and not 17. Anyway, I see council support. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Oh, fantastic, Mayor. I'm pleased to see this is going out to a consultation and uh, already what I've uh, seen in, the, in some of the documents now, it's already, already exciting and I really look forward to this progressing further. It, it nearly missed off the capital works. It was, it was, we saw it was by a, a whisker we saw it wasn't the, uh, to the general manager said I think this should be included in the yes, workshop, yes. that's when it came back on. And i tell you what, if it hadn't been on there, because we deferred this, as you may be aware, from the previous budget, <coughs> we took, I think, 100,000 <coughs> for the feasibility or for the, um, 
the consultant's fee to, to look into this. And uh, and the other 900,000, correction, the other 800,000 that we did be I think, down to the uh, footy club at Lauderdale, I think they got a, a hike of 300 grand and a couple of other places got the part of the city <coughs> there. But anyway, it's back on the agenda. It's being ticked off in the capital works. And in our discussion at the last meeting when we signed off on the budget, I made it quite clear that that was one of the issues that I supported because it was deferred from the previous year until we got a, a, a nice picture of what it was going to, or where it, you know, what it was going to entail, the actual project. So I'm pleased it's there and it's, it's, it was Risden Vale's turn to get its share. Richmond's had its share. Lauderdale has, has more than its share. Um, all Uncle Tom Copley and all's had their share. And it was about time that Risden Vale got its share. So I'm pleased that we were going out consultation because the 900,000 is in the bag and there's no disputing that. <coughs> thank you, uh, thank you indeed, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, we didn't defer this last year. We did not defer this last year. What we did was to say that a unconsultated uh, virtual, uh, virtual or gesture signalling of $1 million to a community, there you go, we've spent $1 million there, community, be grateful, off we go, that that wasn't the best way forward, that that wasn't in the best interest of the community, that that wasn't the best bang for ratepayer money. So <coughs> there has been a delay. Instead of a $1 million gesture stimulus to a community, we've, by, by leaving an extra year, we've come up with an integrated plan, if you like, a 10-year um, vision or concept, and it's not set in stone. This is the discussion document. We're not going out saying this is how it's going to be. We're going out saying, we've looked into it, this is a proposal, would it work? Are oh, there some tweaks that, that could, could work better? But um, the, 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 the value add of a concept like this versus just isolating a specific sporting infrastructure for one specific sport is just so much greater, is so multi-layered. Um, and, and I think it, if, it, if it comes to its fruition, it's, it's going to be transformative for the area. So, um, you know, just to re-emphasise, we're not saying this is, this is set in stone, this is the discussion, but um, look at the benefits of delaying this by one year, instead of just a, a piece, a, a, a bit of a $1 million spend and, and move on, a integrated, uh, long-term, you know, multi-layered community piece of infrastructure. So uh, I seek, seek support to go to consultation. I'll be interested to hear what the results are. Um, Mr Mayor, I just wanted to comment and, and add um, to Mr Walker's comments in that um, the timing of this is far better. And I know that um, Ms Alderman James, James, that's James, right, James, 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 James. Um, is, finding, is finding something amusing in all this, but I would like to... Order, 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 I would like to... Thank you, Order, 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 I would like to point out that the amount of money that um, <coughs> Mr. Alderman James referred to had been magnificently utilised in the Lauderdale community. And the fact is that there is a high attendance uh, down at that ground. Some of the works that have been undertaken have actually made that facility so much more user friendly. It is appreciated by the whole community and I think it, it was um, showing when we dealt with the budget last year that we actually consider all factors. The fact that this matter has now before us is better timing. Um, it's part of a, a bigger look at the whole area and I think that's far more suitable. I absolutely agree that Alderman Walker's version of history is a lot more accurate than that. <laughs> 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 I, I, I mean, this, this, is, this is not, this is not just... James, the patience of the chair is wearing thin. Would you please control your interruptions so that other people can have a fair go around that? 
this is this is not this is not just about uh, one one facility. Um, this this is about a comprehensive plan uh, for services throughout uh, Risdon Vale and addressing infrastructure issues throughout Risdon Vale. And if you look at uh, you know pages sort of 33, 34, uh, 35 of the plan, there's a, there's a long running list. Uh, this this is something that's going to be implemented over a, a quite a long period of time. Um, it, so you know to focus to focus on sort of one one facility and, and say that that's really what this is about. I think is um, entirely misleading. It, it is important that we took the time uh, to get this right. Um, that we're going to consult on it. That we're going to uh, not just get get the views from the community, but get some proper planning into into understanding uh, what's available. Uh, what's needed, you know, from various user groups, uh, and actually, you know, have a plan that, that addresses um, the, the the community needs, the infrastructure needs, uh, uh, you know, across the entire suburb, um, rather than just you know focusing on one facility. So, you know, I, I think it, I think it's misleading to characterise this as being just about the the change rooms and. and Mr Mayor, I think Council should be very pleased with the plan that actually has been done by Ross Plan. There's been a lot of work put into this and a lot of interaction with the community already to date and I'm sure uh, that other aldermen will agree with me in terms of I'm looking forward to actually seeing what consultation responses we get, bearing in mind that the community has already been involved in getting the plan together to this point. And I, I feel that with that involvement there will be a lot of response in relation to this. So I very much support Yeah, uh, Rustenvale is an area that, that's had been lacking in, uh, in council expenditure for many years and I think this, this is a great initiative. Good planning, good design and appropriate community consultation is the way to go with this. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the Richmond Re Recreation Reserve has been a, a large tract of land which has caused a number of issues over the, the past certainly five years. Illegal dumping, people staying there parked at the, at the back and dumping their refuse of various kinds. Um, so this is really opportunity to have a reserve master plan for it so we can actually do something sensible with the site and make it more attractive and more usable to everybody. I think the, the, <coughs> sorry, the information that's come back from the community with the consultation is good and, and has been well taken into account. Certainly some of the concerns that came out like the, the Frisbee Golf and I think I think have been well considered in this amended recommendation and I seek the alderman's support. Yes, very similar. I'm very pleased with this. The, uh, and looking through it, I think it's really, really very good. Yeah. I, I just want to raise something slightly different though. Where the football oval is, and especially the amount of games played there, I believe that along the side of the ground we should have actually had angle parking because to me uh, a lot of cars are already parking on the grass as well. We've got uh, limited parking on that side of the oval and the oval's almost, uh, parking's, uh, cars are, are filling the oval up which is great but I believe down in that street it would have just made it, angle parking would have made for a lot more cars because when we have the fair and stuff like that people are parking further and further away and I just thought that's far enough away where it's not intrusive but uh, certainly the crowd to get to the Richmond over for football games is fantastic. 
Uh, a question through uh, you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Graham. Uh, Mr. Graham, about three weeks ago I met with a group of residents uh, in Richmond and we were actually on the Rivulet Coal River. And the discussion was the location of the, um, the bins for the disc uh, golf. Um, and the discussions uh, varied, but there was a, a degree of concern about the location of the actual um, basket. And if you if you refer to the um, the nice pretty, pretty picture in your agenda, you'll see number six. And that's probably one of the um, standing points. And you'll see a little circle there. Haven't found it yet, Mr. Graham. Okay, well I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait till you get it. Wait. I wait till you have it. Okay. I've got a colour one. If you've got a black one. But um, that location um, is now basically set in <laughs> concrete, if you want to use that term. Um, and that, it would seem, has been relocated from the property that is on about uh, Gunning Street. Let's hope, let's hope, let's go back a step. Initially, the bin was almost at the bottom of that cliff or that hill. In this photo, it is actually being relocated elsewhere. Is that right? Well, it has been <laughs> positioned elsewhere other than at the, at the base of that property. I don't think you're ever involved in that sort of, oh. of detail with the actual discourse. Discourse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, I think both are no, I hope we live on that little detail because of understanding the actual change of value. Who do we ask? Do I ask the general manager? Or who do I find out? Well, um, what, what is the concern on James? Is that uh, surface in the wrong spot? Well, I, I'm saying it's been it's been moved. And I just want confirmation of that because that was the discussion that I had with the seven or eight residents about a month ago, and that was it was adjacent to that property in Gunning. And I just want to know as to whether or not it has been positioned in accordance with their uh, their wishes. That's all. I just want to know. Okay. Sure. Well, it seems we don't have the answer to the This golf course is actually going to be a trial as well. Yeah. So there's all the opportunity. Council support. Uh, we then ask to, uh, with some amendments, to the plan. All those in favour? <coughs> Once again, the amendments to adopt the plan. Walker. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, look, it's been consulted far and wide and I think the end result of this, this plan is of value that the recommendations will uh, enhance the amenity but also perhaps uh, highlight the, the this little underutilised treasure of recreational space. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a magnificent walk around there sometimes. can be difficult with, uh, if, the, if the seepage and, uh, and water around there. And I uh, commend this, this uh, recommendation. Thank you. Other speakers? Here I um, have a question for Mr Graham, his capacity as the responsible officer on this matter. Uh, Mr Graham, the actual um, demarcation between what is council land and what is um, crown land it's quite it's unclear in the actual uh, documents. It does refer to 
the um, the gravel track and the actual management of the area is under council control. Uh, but does that mean that council has management control of the of the whole area, or does it mean that there is only council's responsibility for maintaining only a section of that area or part of that area? It, it's not. It's unclear as to what land is council out there and what land is crown. Um, could you clarify that? The joint funding that comes into this, or is it just that council maintains that gravel track, and obviously the recommendation is to, to do something about the bogginess of that track because of the nature of it being uh, underwater in parts. So <coughs> perhaps you could clarify that as well. Please. Uh, three, now I don't understand that there's any um, joint funding board. It's council's responsibility to. <laughs> yes, uh, introducing new material, see if I get shouted down for it, but also just in the whole process the um, the intrinsic and strong uh, heritage, uh, be it both historical and indigenous, is, is pretty significant in this area as well. So, um, you know, support the plan. So, uh, once again, we've been asked to, with a couple of members, to talk about all those in favour. Against? Carried. 5.4 is the uh, potential preliminary um, Mr. Mayor, um, look, basically what What's being um, proposed at Bayview Secondary College is, is um, along the lines of uh, what Council has already done um, at Clarence High School in terms of uh, development of sporting facilities that, that can then be for the combined use of um, the community uh, and the school. Um, they've demonstrated clearly that, that there is a lot of um, uh, potential for use. There's a, there's a number of sporting groups that are interested in using the facilities. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, uh, this is this is just one step in the in the process. Um, it doesn't uh, commit us immediately to to spending any money, but um, I think that uh, it's, it's something we definitely should be um, embarking on uh, to assist Bayview Secondary College with this development because it, it, it would be a great asset um, for the community down there. Um, Mr Mayor, I think it's important that we adopt in principle the support for this memorandum of understanding because the whole basis behind it is for the development of the rugby area as far as the sporting precinct goes and the school has already shown massive um, inroads into its educational pursuits. This is um, to complement what it is trying to achieve in the community and it's also involving bringing the community in um, and sharing in the whole school community. I think it's a wonderful way of trying to utilise Department of Education facilities for the benefit of the whole community. Um, and I note very much that this uh, adopting this in principle makes at this stage makes no financial implications at all and that would have to be considered at a later time.
Uh, well, according to the officer's report, it's mutually uh, beneficial um, and <coughs> part B of the recommendation is council green principle as there are some other potential hurdles to be jumped in relation to the Crown. Um, so I, uh, I commend uh, the recommendation to the council. Um, Mr Mayor, the council will gain an important final linkage in um, the Tangara Trail. Right pretty relevant um, and additional access to the, the land that's um, precinct land. Um, also the area of land being sought by the club won't have a material impact on council's planned future development in Seven Mile Beach and I think that's pretty pretty crucial <coughs> for our support the motion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, this was covered quite extensively in the Council workshop, but I, I think the bottom line um, in embarking on this is that uh, over a period of time it will be a net saving to Council. Um, in terms, of, in terms of energy savings that it outstrips the, the cost of replacement. Um, all I would say, and I, I raised this concern that was addressed um, during our workshop, is that uh, we account for it in such a way that that initial upfront cost um, doesn't impact on our um, you know, recurrent or capital budgets. Um, that all depends on how we structure the financing. It could be through uh, internal borrowings, for example, um, but I just you know, want to make sure that we structure the financing in a way that the, you know, the, the saving is um, spread out over the period and, and the cost isn't sort of you know, suddenly seen up front. Um, as Alderman Hume has said, uh, essentially this is a great cost benefit to Council over a number of years and we would be perhaps remiss not to do it. I seek help for support. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is part of a lot of work that's being done in, the, in this area. We've been briefing reports about the cars and, and in the Mercury last week about the cars becoming over Stoke Creek and the and vast amount of work that we're doing along with a number of other partners. Closing these roads at some point in the proceedings will help prevent this situation occurring again. I think it's an important part of the strategy to clean this area up completely and I seek support for it. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm just interested to know um, as to whether or not the local residents will in fact abide or respond to this um, questionnaire or consultation that's being proposed in as much as uh, seeking their views on the proposed um, restrict vehicle access. Now, it may come back to say, well, we don't care, you know, or it's a good thing and so on. 
what, what, why can't we, or do we have to go through a particular process in order in order to do this? So perhaps the general manager can explain. statutory process to go through in regard to road closures um, and involve community consultations. Given that we have the consultation process, we get their views, etc. so on. What, what happens then? Can council unilaterally say, well look, we've gone out to consultation, we've only got a piecemeal approach to this, are we going to go ahead and do this or are we going to no, just sort of say... It proves yeah. where um, council is obliged to go out to consultation and then council has the capacity to make their own determination. Um, a couple of questions, Mr. Mayor. The um, so the the decision by the the Transport Commission is that something that would be. Uh, in place and until such time as an alternative decision is made or for a particular period? Um, uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Graham, and I, I just wanted to also um, understand that uh, is, it, is it the intention that the um, access would would be opened up um, as soon as any of these uh, subdivided properties uh, become available for, for occupancy? And if not, what access? Yes, Um, just very briefly, Mr. Mayor, um, I can to answer Alderman James' question about the consultation. Um, through one community together, we have already done quite a lot of consultation in the community about this. Um, <coughs> certainly, the, the information that's coming back at this stage is that the community is very keen to do something about this, and they see closing these roads until the subdivisions are built as a very important part of that whole process. Um, and I think they will be very supportive of it. And I seek council support. Thank you. So we're being asked to get uh, an authorised piece of pipe and report back and have a job before we get the coal. Well, there was enough on here over the side, so there's no worries about that. Anyway, all those in favour? Carried unanimously. Item 12, all in the special time, so there's no matters on those. Questions for that notice. All the judge. Um, I have viewed the meeting, a public meeting that was on the 4th of June 2017 and Mayor you were present of course. Uh, uh, the question is um, there are a number of motions that were put to the meeting uh, and also Peter Edwards proposed a, a motion as well. Uh, what do you propose to do about those motions or are you prepared to just let them my understanding was, and it's probably backed up in the uh, on the list there, that they were going to submit them to the council in some way or another. As of yet, we haven't received the questions. Okay. Uh, the next question <coughs> is in relation to um, the hotel development and the TAFE training. Mm. Um, the formal process and the lodgement and the determination of the DA has been ticked off. My question is, are there any conditions or approvals required before the developer can proceed with the development? Required in relation to the DA before the developer can proceed. <coughs> I can't cite you word for word, but I'm very confident 
confident that there are a number of conditions of the planning application that require various things to be done before any works could commence on the site. Yes. They included things like a development management plan, the one of better term, um, issues around drainage and other matters. Uh, but we can actually, I can actually. Um, does that include the transfer of public land? Um, the transfer of public land is not a matter that was contemplated under the development under the DA. Right. That's a matter that was addressed in the agreement the council council approved. One question, and, and it relates to the uh, questions just asked by Alderman James. Um, as you know, I was at the public meeting, and um, I have a concern that there were a number of uh, statements made at that meeting that are that are clearly factually incorrect, and there's obviously a lot of mi misinformation out in the community. Uh, that includes, for example, that the planning scheme only allows a development of two storeys, uh, which is clearly not true, as we saw from the report. Um, that uh, the yeah. Okay. Well, I, I was going to go through the you know the specific examples, but but the question is, um, do you have suggestions of you know what uh, we could do to tackle some of the misinformation that's out there? Yes, uh, to the general manager and make yourself as Matt. Where are we at in relation to the council considering consideration of, if, if that's going to happen, of bike lanes in Clarence Street? When is that likely to come to council in the next year or uh, six months? Or? Uh, we're looking at a coming workshop uh, in the month of December. Uh, we're looking at the application of the The second question, it's on the consultation. How well we distributed was the survey that was sent out and was that only for residents of Clarence Street, say from Yacht Club down the shore, or how well it was distributed? Uh, I can't be exactly I'll tell you what it's going to be the workshop. Can you, in the workshop, you can show us what you have to do? We'll send it a full consultation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr Mayor, when can we expect the tree on the nature strip adjacent to the joining at 1 Canundal Street to comply with the key principles and objectives of the Council's management of trees, especially the removal of lower branches up to five, three to five metres in order to give clear pedestrian and traffic access uh, and so comply with the general uh, manager's comments on page 11 of the agenda.